everyone and welcome to Real Life Talks. I'm your host Yvonne Heath, author of the book Love Your Life to Death and founder of the I Just Showed Up movement. So I have a wonderful guest here today. Hello, Martha. Hi, Yvonne. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so delighted that you're here. So Martha Henderson's here. We're going to have a great chat, but first we're going to look at this wonderful clip. So it really is in my nature to be helpful and to help other people achieve, which really translates into the role that I play on the sailboat, which is that of crew. That means that I don't steer the boat, but I do pretty much everything else. <laughs> I was often overlooked for being on the team, but brother asked to organize the fundraisers or the regattas and not to sail when often I had more talent and experience of most of those who were competing. When pressure was applied to get an expert or a rock star or a friend on board, because it was easier to kick the girl off than it was to stand up to their buddies who were putting on the pressure. And I was just tired of these feelings of being rejected and not valued for what I contributed to the team. We put together a team of women who competed against the all-male teams, and not only did we have a lot of fun, we won. And we won a lot. Oh, and that all-guy team that kicked me off were last in that regatta with a rock star. I decided there on the dock that this was my time. I was not gonna be a spectator anymore. No more watching anyone else. It was time to pull that Olympic dream out of the back of my mind and put it into action. But if it was gonna happen, I had to take charge and make it happen. I was told you only did well because you sailed with your father. You're too tall, you're too short, you're too fat, you're too thin, you're too old, you're too whatever. After a while, I realized that all of these twos that people were, were trying to give me were actually the excuses that were holding them back from achieving their dreams and goals. It had absolutely nothing to do with me. As it turned out, we did qualify for the Olympics in 2008. And not only did we qualify, but after the first day of competition, we were the top performers of the Canadian Olympic team. So what we proved to everyone who said all the twos, that they don't matter. I surround myself with those like my sailing teams who like to achieve, learn, and want to have fun. Because when, when everyone on the team is in alignment and pulling together, it's smooth sailing. And as the saying goes, a rising tide lifts all boats. I just love that clip and I love the you're to, you're to this, you're to that. And uh, we're gonna talk about that and rising tide. So welcome and tell us more about your two and rising tide. Oh, well, thanks Yvonne, I'm so happy to be here. Um, I, uh, I was excited when you asked me to come on and to talk about this because mm -hmm. I think that it's sort of a universal insecurity that everybody has of being not enough. And that's really what I articulate in the twos is yes. the feeling that not of not being enough and it gets reinforced because other people don't think that they're enough so they try to give you their twos yes. as well as the twos that you have going on in your own head absolutely and so what i found when i was like trying to pursue something like a dream like the olympic games which is completely outside of the comfort zone or realm of most people mm -hmm. outside of my own uh, a lot of those doubts and fears of myself and everybody else sort of became magnified because I think most people are trying to protect you, they're kind, keep you safe. Safe. They don't want you to get disappointed or hurt. No, but then they, but they, they, their that protection comes across as a negative reinforcement of probably everybody else's insecurities as well. Absolutely. So, uh, I, again, they were conflicting. Everything was conflicting. I was too old. I was too young. I was too short. I was too tall. I was too fat. I was too thin. Yeah, it was just too whatever to try mm -hmm. to keep you in that safe little box. And I didn't want to be in that safe little box. I wanted to go out there and actually push the boundaries and see what I could actually achieve. And Well, and push the boundaries you <laughs> did. Let me tell you, what a phenomenal story. It truly is. So tell us about this. I mean, you ended up 
from being someone who might be, you know, shunned from a team to forming a rowing team? Sailing. Sailing. Rowing. Sailing it team. All the time. Yes. Rowers like to get up at 5 a.m. I do oh, not like to yeah. get up that early in the morning. <laughs> so sailing starts at about 11 or 12. Okay, so. yes, there you go. You have to wait for the wind. Yes. Okay, much so more, yes. Much more. Share that amazing journey with us. So I'd always been a um, high-level recreational sailor. Um, my father's a two-time Olympian. Wow. And I, in sailing as well, and I decided to pick this up because we had a cottage on Toronto Island mm -hmm. through the summer and that was really all there was to do was to get in a little boat and go around and sail. Sure. And then I noticed that the cute boys were racing. Mm. So I thought rather than just sitting in the bottom of the boat singing songs all day, yeah. I would go out and, and hang out with the cute boys and sure. race with them, race against them. Wasn't the greatest dating strategy mm, ever. Really, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. But uh, I we did it and did well. And so I often got in uh, put myself or wanted to get onto teams that were uh, both male and female and mm -hmm. sailing you can do that and it's quite often that that happens at the club level but it became a lot easier um, for the owners of the boat or the skippers of the boat to get rid of the girl than it was to sort of stand up to their buddies and say well no she, we're putting her on instead of you that didn't really go well in the locker room so right. um, I would I often got the punt even though I had much more experience more experience and probably yeah better more at, experience yeah. i i think women are better organizers mm -hmm. <laughs> we um i was helping bring everybody else on the team up uh the last time this happened and um got uh told that i wasn't needed for the day before a major championship oh, so the day before yeah. how disappointing it was like a, devastating and it was done in sort of a way of sort of one of these backhanded comments. Hey, you can have these have this weekend off. No, oh, I I'd worked all summer goodness. for it. That's terrible. So I decided that I was going to put to get. I had to do it myself in my own way, and I bumped into a friend, a girl I knew who I hadn't seen for a long time. I think the universe keeps put her in my path. Yes. And she said, Well, why don't you come and sail with my all female team, and we'll go have some fun. And fun we did, and we had we sailed all over the um, United States and Canada, wow. and we had a, a lot of fun, but we also won a lot, and won an Ontario Championships, um, and just continued to progress in in that world. And then, sailing is a sport where they change the equipment. Uh, some to address the different um, advances in technology okay. or or new boats that come along or changes in in demands in the sport and in when I was 32 in 2000 uh, the type of boat I was sailing was named the Olympics and while I always had this kind of aspiration mm -hmm. or this niggle in the back of my head there I didn't really have the opportunity to really put myself out there and do it right so i was actually volunteering at the sydney olympics when this happened and decided as i watched a whole bunch of the people that i'd grown up sailing with sailing in from their olympic competition that this was what i was going to do so Amazing. i took the opportunity um we tried for 2004 didn't make it uh i had to reevaluate and figure out whether or not I was going to do another four years because at that time I was 36 and I again I think the universe put into my path the person that I needed to talk to mm -hmm. and it was a, a friend who was a two-time Olympian and he said but if you're doing it for the two weeks of the games it's not worth it right if you're doing it for the journey the experience and you love getting out of bed every day to make yourself a little bit better mm -hmm. then absolutely go for it so I great did advice that, that yeah. is phenomenal brilliant advice. Actually, yes absolutely and I took it and I said okay I have the tools in my toolbox from the last four years but my teammates are not um, going didn't want they didn't want to go forward so uh -huh. I had to rebuild the team restructure everything and then ultimately, uh, we ended up qualifying for the games in 2008. That is so extraordinary. I just have to say, because I'm sure it was very deeply disappointing to not qualify 2004, mm -hmm. and then to start from, you started from scratch. Mm -hmm. 
to build we'd another sold the boats. Oh my goodness. We sold the boats. We had gotten rid of um, all of our equipment, absolutely wow. everything, and I had to start with a very young team. And so very young team just and and you were 36. I mean there is something to be said for that. Mm -hmm. I think that just <laughs> is extraordinary. Although it's just it's not about age but truly there that does speak to saying you don't have to be 18 19 no. or 20 no to to achieve a goal or take right. a, a, a to take a, a, risk. A, a risk or a leap or redefine yourself in different ways so and yes. yeah it was um so when i went to the olympics i my one of my teammates was 18 years younger than me my goodness the other one was 10 years younger than me but it was the music that was coming on the radio was retro yes, so like, this we, isn't retro yeah, to me. like you know all this, the words <laughs> yeah. of this song it's like yeah because yeah. it's a 1983 song yeah, by i know this yeah. <laughs> that's so yeah. awesome so it was fun that way wow that's yeah. cool. so you went to the olympics 2008 in beijing in beijing okay yeah. so the sailing was actually in Qingdao, which mm -hmm. is 700 kilometers east and slightly north of beijing so we had our own village and it was like an olympics so 400 people people wow. and which was amazing yes. yeah truly amazing yes and so and and you did well throughout we did well for the first couple of days mm -hmm. so uh, after the first day we were second which was the highest uh, performing team for the entire Canadian Olympic team not wow. just for sailing yes. which was incredible uh, but in the Olympics it's one top one two or three or nothing so right. we took some big risks sure. to try to get on the podium and it could have gone either way and unfortunately we didn't end up so well but uh we we made our mark <laughs> you oh and it, it it's funny because i think how many people i mean of course when you hit the podium in the olympics it's amazing but they often win by you know 0 0.07 seconds i mean you you made it to the olympics mm -hmm. that to me it's extraordinary. Yeah. It really is extraordinary and very telling of what you can achieve. You can, yes. You just have to persevere. Absolutely. And not let those twos impact you or else you're, you're just gonna stay at home. Well, and you know, and, and back to that, every single person has that like you're to this or i'm to this i'm to that even when you're you're looking and you think someone's life looks so easy mm -hmm. so perfect they have all their own doubts and they also hear all of those in high school mm -hmm. anytime anybody gave me a compliment or even throughout my life oh yeah if you only knew yeah i'm to this i'm too tall my feet are too big mm -hmm. i have cellulite i have mm -hmm. this you can't and we do that to ourselves, mm -hmm. right? We do that to ourselves. And actually their opinion, when if they think we're to this or that, their opinion of us is really none of our business, is it? Exactly. It's actually taken me 10 years to really talk in a, about the Olympic experience and embrace it in a positive mm -hmm. okay. way. Because the first question you often get asked is, did you win a medal? Of course. And you're, I feel embarrassed and about that because I we didn't. So right. it's like you, not even your Olympic experience was adequate enough. <laughs> and then I'm going, no. That's so wrong. Yeah, it's, it's wrong. wrong. Yeah. And I feel now it's like, no, no. It is about the journey. It's what we did to get there as much as it, the actual two weeks of the games. As my friend said, it's not about the two weeks of well, the games. Well, and, and that is brilliant advice in every aspect of life, truly, mm -hmm. because people do that. You, you accomplish this and they want to know what you're doing next. Mm -hmm. People hear, oh, you wrote a book. Are you going to write another one? It's like, no, no, hang on, let's get back to mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> the book I did, did right? Next. I mean, that's a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And and or oh, you did this. What what's next? You made it to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. That's and and it's funny because I wasn't even concerned whether you got a medal or not. You like you made it to the show. Yeah, I mean, exactly. that's, that in itself is extraordinary mm -hmm. and something to be extremely proud of. Yeah. Extremely proud of. Yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. And so, but. I've, I've also, we have an Olympian who lives in Huntsville, Dara mm -hmm. Howell, yeah. and yeah, she's phenomenal in slope style. She mm -hmm. won a gold medal, Brilliant. and yes, and she went back the second time and didn't win. And I just, that journey of that extreme high, or that those many years of reaching that goal, and then the Olympics, then what, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I know you wrote, uh, reinventing yourself, and um, when the Olympic flame goes out, then what? Yeah. Because, I mean, you, you it's so many years of, of building up to this event. Yeah. And then you go home and 
your garbage has to go out <laughs> and you have to figure out that has to be tremendously challenging well, I think it's it's the same for anybody who has a, a life change. Mm -hmm. um, if you uh, lose a job that you've been involved with and, or yes. you have a divorce or you have a death in the family, it, because your identity is wrapped up in whatever it is that you were so engrossed with for so Absolutely. long. Absolutely. And then it's like, now what? What do I do now? Mm -hmm. And it's there is, I mean, being 51 now, I see so many women and people having to redefine themselves at this age. Yes. Uh, and because, you know, oftentimes people are looking to retire now, but you're not necessarily retiring. Yeah. You're going into that next stage. And what does that next stage of your, your life second look act, like? Absolutely. Exactly. And it's it's sort of like you, you go to high school and then you go to university and then you get a job and then it's okay. So what does 50 look like? Absolutely. And what does the experience post-Olympic look like mm -hmm. and it, it it is a struggle there's a lot of depression sure. with athletes I just have so much respect for the cyclist Clara Hughes who has gotten very involved in um, Bell Let's Talk uh, because there there is especially with athletes no one talks about the depression that happens once the games are yes. over and huge I went through it twice because we didn't qualify in 2004 I actually went to the 2004 Olympics as a volunteer. Right. Not sure that was the wisest move mm -hmm. from an emotional point of view, but right. it, it did sort of give me a quick swift kick where I was like, okay, I have to support my Canadian teammates who were there and, yes. and help them out, which we were in a position to do. Um, but it was the hardest thing to be in the stands in 2004 oh, and watch the, everybody else walk in where you wanted to be yeah exactly that, yeah that's that's a lot to ask of yourself yeah so <laughs> it was say. it was a bit of a um, emotional time mm -hmm. uh, and then after 2008 it it was you know okay we've done it that's great and then now what now what so i leapt back into a corporate job mm -hmm. which i was it was a great job and the two jobs I had after the Olympics were wonderful jobs that just didn't align with who I had become right. after spending 10 years doing nothing but search for excellence. Yeah. That's... And where was that excellence going to come from now? Mm -hmm. So it's like everybody, you have to redefine yourself yes. and fill your, fill your heart and fill your soul as opposed to just filling your, your wallet. <laughs> yeah, oh, 100%. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you're on a new path now. Have you found your passion and purpose? It's, it's evolving, mm -hmm. which I love. Yes. So my company is called Rising Tides mm -hmm. and I run events and uh, speaker series for uh, entrepreneurial women uh, to help m uh, inspire and motivate and to share the experience essentially in this time where people, women are often redefining themselves, right. whether or not the jobs have been, um, they've been made redundant or if they have, uh, their kids have left home and they need to find sure. new, new paths and new things to fill up their time. Uh, and I also motivational speak. And Amazing. I think that it's sort of a, you know, this, this concept of not being good enough and, and how, not being too whatever to hold yourself back mm -hmm. is your universal. It is. Because uh, like Olympian is just another word for expert. Mm -hmm. And I think that everybody who's in a job or in a role, they've spent 10,000 hours pretty much doing that. That's, they say, the definition of expert. Mm -hmm. And it's about embracing and acknowledging your contribution to your team and right. what you've done and, mm -hmm. and how you can contribute and, and raise that that team up. So that's that's the, the, whole, the message or the inspiration I try to give people because it, it is. It's all a, about how you are seeing yourself in the role that you're doing and the validation that you give yourself. And I, and I love that. And it's, I mean, I, I did the same thing 27 years as a nurse, and then I just redefined everything at 50 and mm -hmm. took this leap of faith, which 50s can be fabulous, by the way. Thank fabulous. you very much. <laughs> um, and and you can you can create a new life that you didn't envision, mm -hmm. but just move in the in the direction of passion and purpose and listen to your heart and soul. Right. Are you excited? And I have no doubt that when you're up there doing a keynote or, or speaking, I, I'm sure you just light up the room. Oh, well, thanks. I try to. <laughs> I'm sure you do because you have, 
you can share your experience. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a tremendous story of, of resilience and having to redefine yourself. Mm -hmm. Like now what? Because that's a big one. I mean, that's, that's huge. All of those years and the Olympics and then <gasps> now, what? now what? Yeah. And it was almost a let's put myself back into that safe box that mm -hmm. everybody was trying to put me sure. in sure because then i wasn't to something anymore right and then i was just it, then i wasn't me so it you know saying in the boxes that everybody tries to put you in doesn't necessarily serve you or serve the people around it you or make not. you happy and uh I, that's where I went back to. I went to that safe comfort zone that everybody sure. wanted me to be Well, it was in. the expectation. Okay, so this, you've done this. Yeah. Now you need to go to your a job yeah. and, right. It was easier to talk about having a job at cocktail parties than it was to talk about, well, I'm going to the Olympics. And there, people had no response to that. They go, oh, that's cool. And then they, they don't know what to say after yeah. that. So. It's not the norm. And mm -hmm. it's like, really? Uh, you're this age and you're doing this. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a grandiose dream, mm -hmm. right? It really is. And you did it. Yeah. And you did it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so now, so this speaker series, which uh, do you ever have speakers come from, you know, like Muskoka or anything? As absolutely. Or yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I do from uh, Ancaster, from uh, nor north of Toronto, around. Mm -hmm. it, a, a woman who just came, she had just moved back to Canada from New Zealand. So, wow, um, so people, great. they're finding me because yes. the rising tides is. Uh, I think um, resonates with a lot of people. It's about lifting everybody up, and, and I love that. It's a rising tide lifts all lifts all boats, and you know you you can't not come together with a really inspiring group of women and not feel lifted by it in some way. Uh, and so, as the series has gained traction. We're going to be doing day-long workshops oh, to help people continue to redefine their their goal, their purpose, their mission, and what really sings to them. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's that's going to be coming in the fall. Amazing. And we will continue to have these speaker series in, in different places throughout the city. And, you know, if anybody is interested in coming, my website is risingtides.ca. It's rising pretty easy to tide, find me. Yes, <laughs> risingtides.ca. And so your speakers, are they only women, men and women, uh, primarily women? Or? They've been primarily women in yep. the past, but yep. we are also adding in the opportunity for men to speak. Sure. They have Because men have the same journey. And sometimes Absolutely. their egos are even it, it, more difficult because they do have a um, identification in their job and their role. Absolutely. And if that happens, if that gets pulled away for whatever reason, uh, then they have to redefine themselves too. They do. And sometimes that isn't by choice. No. We were actually just having that conversation how there are times when people walk into work and they're, le they're informed that their mm -hmm. job is no longer. That happens, right? And, just, and, it's, and like, it's, it's the flame goes out. It's like yeah, the Olympic flame it, it, it goes uh, out. Yeah, just like that. Mm -hmm. And then you're, you're walking away and that's your livelihood and that's what you, your identity and mm -hmm. everything. And, uh, and we have seen so many people having to redefine themselves. But the wonderful thing in what you're sharing is that it can be a dark time and mm -hmm. there could be a time of depression, which is many of us go through. Mm -hmm. I know when I left nursing, I just felt so lost. Like, mm -hmm. And I would have like panic attacks, like, oh my gosh, I, I've always been a nurse. What am I thinking? Yeah. What do you mean I'm going to be an author and a speaker? I don't yeah. know what I'm, what am I, <laughs> what am I thinking? But you can redefine yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you walk in the, in the direction of passion and purpose, yeah. you will be content. You will, right? It's, yeah. it's so extraordinary, isn't it? I think so. I think that it. Uh, people say it's not your setbacks, but your comebacks that truly define Ooh, you. Oh, I like that. And Ooh, I have to write that yeah, down. Yeah, it's a good one. It is a good one. And it is. It is about your comeback. It's like how, where, what are you going to? What's your next phase going to be? And it can happen at any time, it can in any way, in any shape, any form. And uh, I just think it's exciting and energizing. But I do think that there's also a, a great value in putting yourself within groups of like-minded people and Absolutely. that's what the speaker series and the workshops are that. all about is and I, I think more and more women they're doing more people are working from home 
It's not as social. That's right. It, it, to get together with mastermind groups yes. or yes. speaker series where you can um, interact and engage with people who are going through similar things. We can support each other. Oh, huge. And learn from each other. And I think, uh, and that just also comes with age and, and some, something important to teach our young people, support each other, right? You don't, if your friend Martha says to you, I want to go to the Olympics, mm -hmm. you don't have to agree. You say, okay, what can I do to support you? Right, exactly. Right? Because I think that's the greatest gift we can give each other. Yeah. And, and we can, well, you can achieve those incredible goals. So I think what you're doing is so extraordinary now, taking your experience and um, and the speaker series, I'm very excited to learn more about mm -hmm. that. And risingtides.ca, yes. right? That's where people can um, connect with you. And if they want to book you as a speaker, um, they can get in touch with me at Martha at risingtides.ca. Okay. I'm also all over Facebook and Instagram, so yes. they can contact me through that. But um, the website or Facebook is being 50. That's the demographic for Facebook. So yes, uh, that's where mostly you'll find me. So yes. Yeah. Well, I do. First of all, I have to say a huge, huge congratulations for being a part of the Beijing uh, for putting together the team. Mm -hmm for making it to the show. I don't care if you didn't get on the podium. You made it to the show. That is extraordinary. Yeah. Um, but also unapologetically sharing the challenges yeah. after, right? And they were challenges. And I, I would love for everyone to eliminate the, you are too, I'm too this, I'm too that. We're all good enough, aren't we? We're all we, good enough. We are not only good enough, we're fabulous. Yeah. We're we are good. fabulous. Absolutely. So I'm so glad you were here, Martha. I know we're going to connect again. Thank you so much. I was, and I'd love to have you, have you come and be one of the speakers. <gasps> okay. I'm going to do Twist it. your arm. Twist, <laughs> Twist your arm. my arm. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank thanks. you. This is okay. great. Thanks. Appreciate it. So thanks for joining us today. Real Life Talks is about learning how to just show up for yourself and just show up for others. Be empowered and resilient. Sometimes have difficult conversations, but sometimes have wonderful, enlightening conversations like today. So my call to action is always, if you want to be empowered and resilient, if you want to be able to just show up, plan your life, plan your death, and then just love your life to death. And always bring your own tambourine to the party. <laughs> Thanks. Bye for now. <laughs> That's my tagline.